Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. And uh, today I wanted to start a, a different series. Uh, I wanted to cover a little bit about the history of Saipan uh, because there's just this place has just got such a rich history and I wanted to try to cover some of that. Uh, but it's just so broad. Uh, I was finding it really difficult to figure out where to start. Uh, so I decided I'm going to just start with the beginning and uh, so that's why I came here. Behind me is where most of the uh, local uh, Chamorros and Carolinans hang out. And today's Sunday, I figured there would be a lot here, but it's probably not going to be here till later on today. So I'll have to come back a little later today and I'll talk to a few of them and see what they can tell me about what they know about the history of, uh, of the island. And I want to kind of focus uh, with them, I kind of want to focus on the Chamorro and the Carolinan era. But I'll just go over what I have learned off the internet uh, to give you a brief history because I don't expect everybody who comes out here to know everything about the history of Saipan. Even though they may, they may not. Uh, what I found off, off the internet is that about the 1500s, uh, the up until the 1500s, the Carolinans and the Chamorros were trading back and forth and living their lives to being fishermen and all that kind of stuff. But after the 1500s, uh, the Spanish missionaries started coming here and trying to... Uh, after Magellan, uh, the Spanish missionaries started coming here and trying to uh, convert every, all the Chamorros to uh, Catholicism. and. The Chamorros really didn't like that, so there was a lot of disputes between the Spanish and the uh, Chamorros for a long time. But they still, the missionaries still came here until the point where this one priest, I forgot his name, uh, he tried to baptize, he baptized the daughter of a chief, uh, a Chamorro chief, against his wishes or without his knowledge. And that infuriated them so much that the Chamorros got together and killed this Spanish priest. And because of that, the Spanish military came and took charge of the island. And once that happened, then there was literally a war between the Chamorros and the Spanish for a long time. But the Spanish still occupied uh, this island. And then a little later on when the Carolinas had their problems with the typhoons and stuff, the Spanish let the Carolinas settle here in Saipan. And, uh, but there was still a lot of conflicts going on. And uh, when the Americans took charge of Guam, the, the people who were in charge of this island sold the island to the Germans. And so then there was a lot of problems between that too, but because uh, the Germans were not all that crazy about being here. And then the Japanese took charge of the island. So that's the little bit of history. I, like I say, it's a broad history and I want to go into a lot of different uh, aspects of it. But today I'm just going to come out here and chat with a few of the Chamorros and Carolinans that gather here. They usually gather here on Sunday, but it's usually in the afternoon. And let's see what they got to say about it. I'll let them let them tell you a little bit about it. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do a little bit later on today, but I'm also going to go around to, step by step, I'm going to go around to all the other historic places here in Saipan because there's just so much. And uh, it's going to take me a few videos to do all this because there's just so much. Uh, but I want to try to cover as much as I can and I'll put, together, put it together the best way I can and let you guys just have a little bit of idea about the history of Saipan. This area here is a real cool historic area. Uh, it used to be one of the most popular areas during the Japanese time. It's called the Nambo Pier. I'm probably not pronouncing it right. It's probably Nambo. But anyways, there was two Japanese companies that... Uh, right here is where you used to sit to wait for the boats. This was covered and they pretty much destroyed it. The vandals pretty much knocked everything down. 
this is what remains of the roof laying here in a pile. I think somebody should restore it, but they don't really have that much passion for historical significance. But this was a, a really cool commercial pier. You can see in this historical thing what it used to look like. I don't know if you can see that very well. That's what it used to look like, I mean, for a while. But it was, uh, that's what it used to look like right there. And here's a little bit about what it was about. Yeah, the boats used to pull up right here and over this area. It's a lot shallower now than it probably was then, but, and that's where you used to wait for the boats. This whole area. And this dock over here was also part of the commercial uh, fishing boats dock because these boats were huge you gotta you gotta understand these boats were, were huge and uh, this was dug out a lot more I'm sure it's pretty shallow now but it wasn't then I guess this was a German dock. It was a lot nicer back then than it is today. Look at this picture. Okay, so let's go check it out. Oh, what's left of it? That's the boat launch now. But this is the, the dock.
go to this side. This side's a little more intact. This is still a really nice place. The water is crystal clear. Good place to come and hang out. But if they dredged it out, it could still be functional. I, there are some boats that pull up here that go to Garapa, uh, go to Managaha uh, sometimes, and some tourist boats pull up to this side over here. But other than that, there's not that much uh, boats that use this dock. But if they dredged it out, it could be a functional boat dock again. This bell tower was constructed in in the 1930s by the Japanese. Uh, it was part of a church that was here. This land is one of the oldest churches on Saipan. But this is the bell tower that the Japanese, I mean, the, the Japanese made a whole church here, but the bell tower is the only thing that's left. And now it was built in the 1930s. But during the war in 1944, uh, the whole church was destroyed and you can literally see uh, bullet holes in the sides of this bell tower from when it was blasted with bullets on all sides. Well, not so much on this side. And then after, after the war, they built this church. But this ground here is one of the oldest church grounds in Saipan. This is an old Japanese uh, bunker. This area here was one of the was the site of one of the largest tank battles in American history. And I have to come over here when the museum's open because I don't know what these big slabs of concrete are. I don't know if those are underground bunkers or what this is because this might lead into a larger underground bunker and that's what all this might be. But uh, I'll have to come back here when it's open. Well, this was actually the site of a German hospital that was built in 1925. It's really hard to read this. I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up. But this site where this is was actually a German hospital. And then later I guess the Japanese bunker was built. But uh, That's what it looked like way back then. This is uh, an actual 
uh, steam locomotive that the Japanese used to, to harvest sugar cane in Chalankanoa. And this is what it used to look like. It was own, owned by the, a company called NKK. And that's what it looks like, or it used to look like. This is the English description. And here's the Japanese description. I'm trying to see if I can get it all in here. And we'll go down to the Russian description. Okay, let's check it out. It's kind of cool. And they used to put the sugar cane on the back of the car. And I guess they had 50, uh, they had a lot of track going all the way from Shellon Canoa all over the island, I guess. Here it talks a little more about it, but you probably can't read any of it. It says, this steam engine was used to haul sugar cane to a Japanese factory before World War II. Mr. Bill e Eager, boat's Wayne mate of the Naval Operating Base Fire Department, set the steam engine up as a landmark for the fire department in 1945. Thirty years later, this engine was then completely restored through the efforts of Mr. Shiro Shimoda. I don't know if you can even see that. This is it, man. It's pretty cool that they kept this around. I just wanted to film this because I didn't even know these little restaurants were here. It's like a little food court inside this museum area. And I had no idea they were here. They got pizza, they got chow time. Uh, they got a couple other different restaurants here, a barbecue place and another little Japanese restaurant. I didn't even know it was here. This is a statue dedicated to the guy who founded the sugar cane industry here in, in Saipan. Uh, let me, I'll do this plaque and then I'll go back to the history board. Okay. Mr. Matsu Haruji. President of South Seas Development Corporation. He was a pioneering Japanese entrepreneur known as the Sugar King, who established a sugar industry in the Northern Marianas Islands and oversaw its highly successful operations from the 1920s. I don't know if you can read that. Anyways, let's go back to the history board. Okay, here it got a couple of pictures of it. And it says, the Matsu statue, a tribute to the Sugar King. This larger than life bronze statue was erected in honor of the Har Haruji Matsu, uh, who established the commercial sugar sugar industry in the Northern Marianas Islands in the pre-World War II years. In 1920, Matsu constructed a thorough inspection of the island during which he became convinced that the Saipan had excellent potential for sugarcane agriculture. In 1922, he established the Nanyo Kohatsu Kabushiki Kaisha, South Seas, South Seas Development Company, <coughs> better known as the NKK or Nanko. 
under Matsui's direction, Nanko established three large sugarcane plantations on Saipan. Yeah, they got the sugarcane from Chalon Kanoa. And he also did it in Tinian and Rhoda. Yeah. Okay, there's the Japanese explanation. And let's get the Russian explanation. There's the pictures. There's the actual statue.
right here, nestled between these coconut trees, buried in the beach, is an old tank. This is the engine block, and it goes out to here. You see that in a troop transport. This is a piece of it, and it goes all the way to here. But this is the engine block sticking out of the sand. You see the... Looks like the exhaust manifold. I don't know why they haven't unburied this. And, uh, but this is pretty cool. This is right here in Gatapan. And this is a piece of it. Sticking out of the sand.